people said North Korea is it's it's like the paradise on earth, and people trusted that. <laughs> More than ninety three thousand uh, Zionist Korean deaths. One out of six Zionist Korean moved to North Korea, even though they are from originally from South Korea. I saw it by myself for the first time. There is no freedom at all. The, the rumor started to spread among the Zainichi community that there is a very scary prison camp and somebody uh, disappeared all of a sudden. Where's my brother? Uh, my mom asked, but they said nothing. I have never heard from them after that. Yeah, it's more than 25 years. I don't know whether they are alive or not. North Korea, for decades now, has been something of a villain on the world stage. North Korea's despotic leader... It's a murderous, oppressive regime. Rising fears over North Korea's growing nuclear capabilities. North Korea has abandoned freedom and prosperity and dismissed peace. But for those who grew up in Japan's small North Korean communities, stories they heard about the secretive state presented a far different picture. It shows how, how beautiful and how happy to live in North Korea. This is Hyung Soo Park. She grew up in a community of Zainichi Koreans, a term used to describe the more than one million ethnic Koreans who call Japan home. Her family, like many others at the time, were members of the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan, or Chongryeon, a pro-North Korean group that runs everything from banks, schools and restaurants to media companies, shipping lines and pachinko parlors. I grew up in Kobe in Japan. There is a big community of Zainichi Koreans, so I went to Korean school all from kindergarten to high school. All of my sisters and brothers and even my parents all went to Korean school. So even though I was living in Japan, I was not living in Japan. We thought we are not Japanese. We were taught we are not Japanese, even though we are the third generation. Uh, we are told we are foreigners here, so uh, we need a strong ties with somewhere. Many Korean schools at that time uh, organized by Chongbyeong, pro-North uh, Korean organization, was so strong at that time, and the North Korean regime supported the Zainichi community uh, faster than the uh, South Korean government. It was kind of the fence uh, for us that protect us in a way. So the first song I learned at Korean school in the kindergarten was like uh, the praising Kim Il song. There was a portrait in the classroom. So I thought, oh, it's a different world. It's not Japan. And I learned maybe this is a place I, where I belong to. From 1959 to 1984, the Chungrung promoted a PR campaign that sought to convince Zainichi Koreans to abandon their lives in Japan for North Korea, a place they called a paradise on Earth. The repatriation program was run by the Red Cross, paid for by Pyongyang, and was heavily advertised by the Chungrung. Dubbed the Return to Paradise program, it convinced some 94,000 people to move to North Korea. Many left Japan to chase dreams of a better future. My uncle uh, was a teenager and he had a dream in Japan. He had a dream in Japan, but at that time, it was 60s, there was a serious discrimination against Koreans in Japan. My uncle uh, was taught at school that, you know, there is the freedom. If you go to the fatherland, you can, you can make your dream come true. Uh, he had a girlfriend. Uh, when he was in high school, and his girlfriend moved to North Korea first. So he decided to 
go to North Korea and find her <laughs> because he was a teenager and my uncle left uh, Japan in 1967 and he even didn't find his girlfriend. He was assigned in Wonsan city and there is no freedom of moving around in North Korea so it's so hard to find the people in North Korea so he has never met her again <laughs> even though he moved to North Korea. He belonged to some organization uh, which is something related with mushrooms but later if you pay money to the, the company or organization where he belongs to then he doesn't have to go to work every day. That's how the society works, he told me. We got so many letters that said, send, please send up some money, commodities and everything. And there are so many other Zainichi people saying, oh, they're having a hard time. You have to send money. Uh, maybe a year later, my uncle in North Korea sent a letter because he could not write his honest feeling. He said, just send me a balloon, which means he want to co come back home. That made my mom cry and she realized that, oh, this is not the place that we should go. And uh, my mom had so much pain and she regretted so badly about letting him go. I saw my parents sending money and commodities and everything to North Korea throughout their life because uh, one out of six Chinese Koreans sent their family members to North Korea. Um, it's like a hostage. We have to be loyal to North Korean government uh, so that we can protect them. But school told us that, you know, the socialist fatherland will provide everything we need and the returnees are living happily ever after. I thought it's all a lie and something is so strange why why they don't teach the reality park was soon able to see the reality of north korea firsthand when i went to north korea when i was 17 it was a school trip uh, two weeks when i arrived at one some port i could uh, immediately found my cousins uh, on the port because they were wearing the clothes that we sent. It was so strange. In the first time in my life, I saw my cousins, but they look very similar to me. And yeah, I can't, I can't forget that moment. Mm. As I got off the boat, the ferry, I was kind of shocked that the promising fatherland looked so gray. And I saw my uncle, and I felt his, you know, regret and his hardship and he missed Japan so much. He lost everything all of a sudden and it was like a nightmare just imagining how terribly changed his life is. They have no freedom of speaking out what they feel. So it's, they're like, when they, when you talk in a hotel, they're like, you. you you can't say whatever you want because there is a maybe wiretapped. So at how at home in the blanket we talked freely, but otherwise we can't talk freely. And there is always a watchman, the guide man, who, who is watching us. In 1996, Park returned to North Korea for a second time to discover that conditions were even worse. Uh, the second trip was terrible. Um, I went with my mom and I saw my three cousins and my auntie. They looked so sad and they're almost crying. My mom asked, where's your daddy? Where's my brother? But they said nothing. They all started to cry. Their father was taken away somewhere else and they knew it's a secret police and he's not going to come back home soon and they're very scared. I promised to them that, you know, I'll be back and don't worry, just stay alive, just survive. Uh, we'll be back soon, we promised. Then we left and 
that's the last time I saw them. I have never heard from them after that. Yeah, it's more than 25 years. I don't know whether they are alive or not. Once I wanted to forget about them. I wanted to forget about Chinese's life because it's too big burden and too complicated. I wanted to be a simple South Korean citizen and I wanted to forget about the, my memory in North Korea. ago. I work for North Korean uh, human rights issues with so many NGOs and North Korean defectors and one North Korean defector called me one day. I call him Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim, he escaped from North Korea and he is living in Japan. I flew to Japan to see him and um, he said mm, he knew everything about my uncle. The reason why my uncle was arrested was uh, there was a gathering of uh, friends and my uncle had a phone call from Japan, international phone call, which is another uh, uncle in Japan. And my big uncle in Japan was drunk and he told my uncle in North Korea that Romania government was collapsed by the people of Romania. So don't worry, North Korea will not last so long. That's what he said on the international phone call. And everybody in that room was frozen. Even listening to that kind of story is a crime in North Korea, he said. And next day, the secret police arrested everyone in that room. And then they investigated, they tortured, and they forced them to say everything that, you know, their friends discussed by themselves in the past, you know. If they say something good, then you may be released. So one of his friends said, you know, my uncle uh, once said, you know, he wanted to shoot Kim Jong-il when he, if he had a machine gun or something like that. When he was drunk, he said something terrible. Then my uncle's charge became more serious and my uncle was tortured, beaten to death. That's what Mr. Kim told me. So when I was in North Korea in 1996, he was not there, he was dead already. If one member, one family member uh, was charged with some crime, the rest of the family will be charged, you know, it's all connected. Oh. That's North Korean system. Mm. Um, after my uncle was tortured to death, the rest of the family all taken away. My three cousins and auntie, oh. they were taken away to a political prison camp called Yoto Camp. That's number 15 camp. I heard some North Korean defector told me this woman now lives in Seoul and her friend spent together with my cousin and my auntie at political prison camp. At that time, that was over 10 years after they were arrested and they left only with their bones and skins, seriously malnourished. So she told me maybe they're dead there is no hope that they're still alive. So just forget about them. That's what I was told. I really could not understand why, why they taken away the rest of the family. What is the sin? What is the sin of them? What crime they have committed? I really didn't understand. And, but this is, the reality of North Korea. It's not only the story of my family. 
so many, you know, similar stories are happening now in North Korea too. So I wanted to let the world know that you know this is happening right now, and especially I was, I felt like I was betrayed by、um, my education. What was it? You know, my education was all praising North Korea. Never taught me about the reality of North Korea, and I think they are. I think the way they educate students was so wrong, and I think、um, I started to think about what am I gonna do. Maybe I should tell this story、uh, to people. As you know,、mm-hmm. uh, NKTR is pre- representing victims of enforced disappearances、mm-hmm. and interviewing the victims' family members and submitting their cases to the working groups on enforced or involuntary disappearance.、Oh. So, so the people. Of the working group of United Nations, yeah, they recognized that、uh-huh. your uncle、mm-hmm. like was、um, the victim of this enforced disappearance、okay. in North Korea. Uh huh. So it's the confirmation that your uncle's case is like transmitted to the government, the North Korean government. Right. Okay, and this is the okay. It's the. The testimony that yeah, I made,、right. okay, on the occasion of the 62nd anniversary of the start of Paradise on Earth displacement operation, we strongly urge the government of North Korea to clarify the fate and the whereabouts of Zainichi Koreans, many of whom remain disappeared to this day.、Oh. We have submitted around、uh, already 107 enforced disappearance cases committed by the North Korean government. So this was really very meaningful statement from、mm-hmm. the UN Working Group on Enforced Disappearance、mm-hmm. because they recognize the problem、mm-hmm. and also they、uh, officially requested the North Korean government to re-establish the accountability.、Mm-hmm. When I left North Korea, I promised them that I'll be back soon and I will. Help them, and I tried. I tried hard to go back to North Korea and to do something for them, but there's nothing I can do for them. So I could not keep my words. And I think if I forget about them, their existence, they never existed. The only thing I can do is not forgetting them. I imagine that someday, maybe, one of my family members may arrive in South Korea, and that might be a miracle. But I still believe that, you know. To learn more about Japan's North Korean community and a return to Paradise program, watch this video next.